Welcome to another episode of Bullet Point. My name is Sarah, and I'm here to guide you on this journey. So let's take off the safety and squeeze the trigger. Marty Echemendi was an all-American boy, born on March 16, 1964, and raised in Miles City, Montana. He had been an athlete, a scholar, and a solid citizen. His father owned a sanitation business, but taking it over was not considered a birthright. If Marty wanted to take over the business, he was going to have to earn it. He went to college and earned a degree in petroleum engineering. He got married and had two beautiful kids. He was described as hardworking, funny, and loving. He had his life planned and it was going the way it should. He took over the family business and he sent his youngest brother, Mike, to college to one day buy the local pharmacy. All was right in the world until a cool October night in 1987. The next 17 hours, Marty could not have planned for. Marty was out at a local football game with two friends. They left there and went to the town and country club. Marty eventually left there with another friend. They drove downtown and made stops at the Drake Lounge and the Log Cabin Bar. They made their way to the Golden West Lounge about 1 a.m. on the night of October 16, 1987. Vernon Kills on top and his brother Lester entered the bar later that night with two women, Diane Bullcoming and Doretta Forbear. And no, I didn't make any of those names up. Marty left the bar at about 2 a.m. His friend had driven him to the bar in Marty's truck. Apparently, Marty couldn't remember where on the street it had been parked, so he was having trouble finding his car. The foursome offered to help. Marty got into the black Dodge Dart with Vern, Lester, Diane, and Doretta, and they drove around searching for his vehicle. According to documents filed with the Montana Supreme Court, Diane Bullcoming testified that Lester said to Vern in his native tongue of Northern Cheyenne that they should roll him and steal from him. Marty was in the back seat with Lester when Lester began beating and choking him and trying to force pills down his throat. Lester ordered Marty to empty his pockets. They rifled through his wallet and took credit cards and two paychecks. Lester began beating Marty again when Vernon stopped the car, saying he wanted in on some of this. The boys removed Marty from the car and beat him and kicked him while he was on the ground. Marty was begging for them to stop. Vernon got into the back seat with Marty and tried to choke him. He then stopped the car and told Marty to take off his clothes. The boys forced him naked into the trunk. They later used Marty's credit card to buy gas in Ashland, Montana. Doretta Forbear fled to a friend's house. But Lester and Vernon picked up another woman, Levon Kiros. The boys stopped at a water trough and washed the blood from their hands. Diane Bullcoming saw Marty in the trunk. His hair was matted with blood. His eyes and mouth were swollen and he was covered in blood. They then went to Broadus, Montana and cashed one of his checks. Bullcoming suggested they go to Gillette, Wyoming. They turned off on a side road from Highway 59 and let a blindfolded Marty out of the trunk. Lester threatened him with a metal pipe that if he tried to run away, he would be beaten. Lester became angry when Vernon removed the blindfold. He, he worried that Marty would be able to identify them. Lester said they would now have to kill Marty. Vernon agreed, according to Diane Bullcoming. Lester forced Marty to drink a mixture of beer and Everclear, attempting to make him pass out. They then put him back in the trunk. Marty pleaded through the back seat that he had a wife and two sons. By Saturday afternoon, 
they reached Gillette, Wyoming. They stopped to get gas using Marty's credit card. They were able to cash a check. Marty began pounding on the trunk and calling for help. So Vernon instructed Kiros to move the car to an alley. Marty had started to make quite a bit of noise from the trunk. Lester told Vernon they needed to get rid of Marty or they'd get caught. Vernon agreed, but wanted to wait. Lester and Bull Cumming took the car and drove out of town. Lester turned onto a side road, stopping only when they weren't visible from the main road. Bull Cumming said Lester opened the trunk and hit Marty with a pipe, while the victim said, Oh God, no God, no, don't do this to me. Lester kept hitting him, causing blood to spurt from his head. Lester then hit him with a tire iron and a rock. After throwing the tools into a field, Lester got back in the car. After they drove a short distance, he told Bull Cumming to stop so he could shoot Marty, and he tried by putting a twenty-two caliber shell in vice grips and hitting the shell with a hammer. This guy's a genius. They kept on driving, but stopped at the Rustic Inn Lounge because the car had two flat tires. Again, genius. Bull Cummings said that she saw Lester try to cut Marty's throat with nail clippers. She went into the bar. Later, Lester came in and told her he was dead. Vernon and Kiros joined them that afternoon. They bought new tires and left Gillette driving south. They dumped Marty's body in an abandoned community hall about 20 miles south of Gillette. A rancher was driving by when he noticed their car parked at the community hall. They drove off without closing a gate, so he followed them and he forced them to stop. He told them to go back and close the gate, which they did because they're geniuses. They then drove to Sheridan. Lester and Bull Cumming bought some new clothes with one of Marty's credit cards and got a motel room while Vernon and Kiros drove to Billings, Montana. On the way there, Vernon disposed of a blanket which had been used to cover Marty. Kiros said that she and Vernon stopped at home where they washed their clothes and washed out the car. The afternoon of October 18, 1987, Yellowstone County law enforcement was told to be on the lookout for a black Dodge occupied by four people that might have been involved in an assault and a kidnapping. That same day, an officer spotted the car. It was pulled over and Vernon and Kiros were arrested. Lester and Bull Cumming hitchhiked to Billings where they were arrested at a friend's house on October 19th. That same day, Officers found Marty's battered, disfigured body in the abandoned building. An autopsy found that he had died from extensive blunt trauma to the left side of his head, which crushed his skull. The pathologist said Marty had been injured in the head at least 45 minutes, but up to 12 hours before he died. He was sentenced to death for the first two charges and 40 years in prison for the robbery. His brother Lester received the same sentence. Diane Bullcoming was sentenced to 40 years after she pleaded guilty to robbery and testified against Vern and Lester kills on top. She was released after serving 12 years in prison. This is where the story should end, but it doesn't. Vernon Kills on Top appealed to the Montana Supreme Court. His attorney alleged that there was a Brady violation during his trial. The appeal asserted that the prosecution had withheld information that could have changed the outcome of the trial. The court commuted his death sentence to life without parole. What a lucky break. This is where the story should end, but it doesn't. In 2019, the court ruled on an appeal from Vernon Kills on Top that being charged with both aggravated kidnapping and felony murder falls under the rules of double jeopardy. The Montana Supreme Court agreed and dismissed the kidnapping sentence. 
aggravated kidnapping sentencing rules bar parole, making kills on top ineligible. Since he was no longer serving a kidnapping sentence, he could come up for parole as early as 2020. Marty Echemendi is remembered fondly by all who knew him. His family has vowed to fight parole for Vernon Kills on Top. They plan to show up for every parole hearing in an attempt to block this piece of shit from being released. This was a senseless, callous, unnecessary murder. There ought to be the highest penalty for that. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Bullet Point. If you like this content, hit that like button. Also, if you're interested in being notified whenever new content is uploaded to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. Thank you for being here. Remember to stay out of the crosshairs. This is Bullet Point.